Okay, so some uh, general help involving the sine function and the cosine function and using them to help you uh, solve equations that you may be given. Um, so first thing we need to remember is what the graphs of those functions look like. So basically we recognise the general pattern that sine and cosine curves um, go from 1 to minus 1 and the special points we need to remember all the time are 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees and the corresponding negative values. Um, so the sine curve uh, starts at uh, 0, um, peaks at 1, comes back down, um, bottoms out at minus 1 and then comes back. So the general sine curve, we need to remember the key points and then it just keeps repeating itself. So y equals the sine of theta, theta being any angle. And the cosine curve, well it's the sine curve uh, translated by 90 degrees. So the cosine curve starts at 1 on 0. And again, looking at the key points, 90, 180, 270, and 360. And again, we should recognise the curve just keeps oscillating on forever. And again, the amplitude goes between 1 and minus 1. So this time, the cosine curve So the cosine curve being the sine curve translated over. So y equals the cos of theta. So we might be asked questions like, uh, for example, they might tell us that the the cos of 60 degrees equals one half, and they might then say something like find theta in the domain of up to 360 degrees, down to minus 180 degrees, and they might say something like find all theta where the cos of theta equals a half. So they've given us this fact that the cos of 60 degrees is a half, so we look at the cos curve, and um, we can see 60 degrees, a half, and then we think to ourselves, well it's asking us to work in the domain of minus 180 up to 360 so we'd have to continue this curve down to the minus 180 area but we can already see that it's not going to need to go down to there to get a half so we can already see then that the corresponding values are going to be minus 60 degrees and then we come across here we can see then we've got another value over well by symmetry 30 degrees um, was up to that point there, so it'll be 30 degrees more there, so it's going to be 300 degrees. So 30 degrees because that was 60, 30 degrees there, so 30 degrees there, symmetry point, minus symmetry down the 180 line there, flip over, that'll still be the same as a half. So we can see then from the uh, cos curve that theta will be minus 60 degrees, 60 degrees, and 300 degrees. At each of those, the cos of theta will equal a half. Okay. Uh, this will be a non-calculated paper, but we will check just to make sure that uh, we haven't uh, led you on the garden path of this explanation. So, if we make sure we're in degrees mode, yep. So, if we do the cos of negative 60, yep, one half. We do the cars of 300, yeah, a half. So that explanation should work. Um, other kind of questions I could give you is they might even give you a calculator question where they might say to you, um, find all theta where the sine of theta equals. 0.6 to one decimal place. So let's have a look. 
So what they're going to say then is that. So they're going to say to you the sine of theta equals 0 0.6. So we use our calculator to work out what theta is. So theta, uh, so we need the inverse sine to get to the answer. So we need the inverse sine of 0 0.6. So second function sine to the minus 1, 0 0.6 equals. So 36.9 degrees, because they said to work to one decimal place, 36.9 uh, degrees. And they might have said, again, a domain, so let's say we, we're doing it between uh, theta of 450 degrees, and we're going to go down to 360 degrees. So again, <coughs> that suggests then that we need to be looking at the symmetry properties of the uh, sine curve. So if we look at the sine curve here, we can see that uh, 0.6 gave us an answer of 36.9 degrees. So 36.9 degrees. So if we're going to, um, to minus 360, so let's try and get the sine curve. We're going all the way to 450. So that's going to be 450 degrees. And then we're going all the way back to minus 360. So again, key points. So peak at 90, trough at 270, cut point at 180, cut point at 360, and there's 450, so every 90 degrees. So 90, 180, 270 negative, and then negative 360. So that was negative 90, negative 180. We only need a sketch, it doesn't have to be perfect, just to give us an idea of what's going on. So we found from our calculator that the sine to the minus 1 is 0 0.6 to 36.9. So we're recognizing that that's going to be there, so 36.9. And therefore, other values that work for this then. So we come across our curve. And we can see then that we've got to use the symmetry properties to find that we're going to have another point there. So that was 36.9 beyond a zero, so that's going to be 36.9. So that's going to suggest to me that the 360 plus 36.9 makes 396.9 degrees. So that should be one answer. Um, symmetry property here, then we've got a line of symmetry here. So 36.9 take away from the 180. So 180 take away 36.9, uh, 150. 150, 144, 143.1, so 143.1 degrees. And then again, we can see from here that if we uh, come over to this side, then that's going to be minus 216.9 degrees. And then we're going to be adding 36.9 to 360, negative 360, so let's calculate questions there. 360 negative plus 36.9, so negative 323.1 degrees. Okay, so using symmetry properties has allowed us to find all the answers in the domain 360, so I'm suggesting that theta then will be, well, the 36.9 we found, uh, coming from this side, it also includes negative 323.1 degrees, uh, negative 216.9 degrees, uh, 143.1 degrees, and 396.9 degrees. Okay, so we should obviously check, uh, just calculate that question. So the sine of 323.1 negative is going to be... Uh, 0 0.6, that's fine. Doesn't matter that it's bit out, remember it's to one decimal place, it's accuracy, so it won't be exactly 0 0.6. Um, so then we've got the sine of bracket uh, 216.9, negative. Uh, okay, again, 0 0.6, no problem. And then we've got the sine of 143.1 degrees, 0.6. And then we've got the sine of 396.9 degrees equals 0.6. Okay, so from the symmetry properties, then we can see how we could work this through.
by sketching the sine curve, putting on the key points at 90, 182, 70 and so forth and looking for the symmetry points and how it works. That's one way of doing this. Uh, there are some pure rules uh, where you can say that the sine curve is a translation, uh, sorry, it's got a period of 360 and uh, therefore you can start working with 360 degrees plus or minus and various other things but I find the symmetry uh, approach um, seems to work quite nice for getting the answers reasonably quickly.